couple of weeks ago, I admittedly came down pretty hard on Bernie Sanders for the first time ever because, inexplicably, he decided to distance himself from Tim Canova. Now, my contention wasn't necessarily that Bernie Sanders decided to ditch Tim Canova so much as he seemingly chose the establishment over his own political revolution because even though he wasn't going to be campaigning for Tim Canova, he was still going to hit the campaign trail for Hillary Clinton. Here's what I said specifically. I can't rationalize this. I can't defend you here, Bernie. This is indefensible. Just because you're Bernie Sanders and I liked you and you galvanized the whole political movement doesn't mean that you're above criticism. And again, I would be okay with you abandoning Tim Canova if you weren't going to campaign for Hillary Clinton. But the fact that you're ditching him and obviously distancing yourself from him for some reason, but yet are going to campaign for Hillary Clinton is absurd to me. Now, various mainstream media outlets, to my surprise, actually picked up on this criticism that I had of Bernie Sanders. And when Bernie Sanders was on Meet the Press with Chuck Todd, Chuck actually brought my criticism to Bernie Sanders' attention. Here's what he had to say. You know, Senator, one of your supporters, uh, Mike uh, Figueredo, uh, ho hosts a progressive uh, called Humanist Report podcast, and he was really upset at you personally because he actually thought you abandoned Mr. Canova. He thought, where were you? You didn't campaign for him. Uh, and he even said, look, that feeling you felt when Elizabeth Warren abandoned you and chose to run away from you during the Massachusetts primary, that's what Tim Canova is feeling right now what do you say to him or any other sanders supporters <laughs> well what that feel i feel as if you didn't do enough our, well you know there are a lot of things happening in this country things happening in my own state and work that i have got to do i can't do everything but i would say that uh our supporters as i understand that contributed about six hundred thousand uh, dollars to mr canova's campaign uh, that is a very significant contribution uh, I think what you are going to be seeing uh, in the weeks and months to come, uh, Chuck, is me playing an active role, not only trying to make sure that Donald Trump does not become president of the United States, uh, but that, in fact, we create a movement for this campaign and for the future, which creates a mm -hmm. government in which our government responds to the needs not of the Koch brothers right. and wealthy campaign contributors, but the ordinary people. So let me just say, first of all, that it was really weird to see my name in uh, mainstream media news outlets, because even though he completely butchered my name, I, it, it happened all my life. Um, you, you know, it's just strange to know that the things that I say actually can make it to the political establishment. So hopefully they will take the words that I say uh, and realize that I'm trying to be constructive in my criticisms. So. With that being said, do I feel as though Bernie Sanders adequately answered my question? No. <laughs> I wasn't very satisfied. Uh, I, he laughed off my criticism, and he also kind of felt like he dodged the question in some ways. But I honestly am not too mad at Bernie Sanders. I don't hold that against him because, honestly, I don't feel like he was given the full context of my criticism. See, the title of my video really suggest the, the main problem that I had with Bernie Sanders. It was that he made time to campaign for Hillary Clinton, but not Tim Canova. And also, he decided to distance himself from Tim Canova. I mean, it was obvious, right? Because when he was debuting the political uh, organization that he just created, Our Revolution, he spotlighted several candidates and he left out Tim Canova. So I don't know what happened. It felt like he was playing sides. Like he picked the establishment over us because he worked out some type of deal presumably with Hillary Clinton to lay off of Debbie. I don't know, but in the end I wasn't necessarily uh, satisfied with Bernie Sanders' response and I think that's because he doesn't really fully grasp why I was so disillusioned with his choice to abandon Tim Canova. It all came down to him doing that but then still campaigning for Hillary Clinton. I would have nothing to say if Bernie Sanders didn't campaign for anyone, but the fact that he chose Hillary Clinton over Tim Canova that was really frustrating to me, and it hurt, honestly, as a longtime Bernie Sanders supporter. Even before he entered the race uh, for the Democratic primary, I was a fan of him since 2010 when I saw him filibuster uh, tax cuts for the rich. He was on the floor for 10 hours, and I knew that this was someone who I could trust in politics, maybe one of the few members of Congress that I could actually believe in. And Bernie Sanders, you know, he, he's been inspirational to me for a very long time, so... I'm a longtime fan of Bernie Sanders, so when I do criticize him, just know that it's coming from a place of 
me really hoping that it's constructive and that I can help him facilitate actual political change. So, I mean, the fact that myself, as well as other progressives, have been critical of Bernie as of late, you know, it it's gotten mainstream media outlets questioning whether or not progressives are actually turning on Bernie Sanders. And I actually wrote a piece for the Huffington Post explaining my take on the matter and how it's really not about progressives turning on Bernie Sanders so much as we're worried about him turning on us. I don't think that he's selling out, but I think that he's making some decisions that I disagree with. And I feel the need to voice my opinion about that. But let me just say this in conclusion. Uh, I'll always remember what Bernie Sanders did. He changed American politics forever. He galvanized a whole new portion of the electorate that we didn't know even existed. He brought people into the political process that had never voted before in their lives. My mom is one of them. She's 65 years old and she voted for the first time because she believed in Bernie Sanders. No other politician did that. And she's not the only one. There are many people who were brought into the political process because of Bernie Sanders. And I also... Look at that progressive record that he had. I mean, he was standing up for my rights as a member of the LGBT community before I was even born. So I'll never forget what Bernie Sanders did. But with that being said, Bernie Sanders supporters are not like Hillary Clinton supporters. We're not sheep. In 2008, when Hillary Clinton told her supporters to support Barack Obama, they did that almost immediately. But for us, there's many of us that don't actually want to get behind Hillary Clinton. Many will, but many still won't. We're all gravitating more towards Jill Stein. Not because we hate Bernie Sanders and that, you know, we're just trying to be petulant children. It's because we're actually objective and we hold our leaders who we like and are inspired by to a very high standard. That's not because, you know, um, we're just overly harsh and we want to subject every single individual in Congress to this progressive purity test. That's not what it is. It's because we really believe in them and we think that they can take the criticism that we have. So we don't have to deal with them with kid gloves, okay? We can take those kid gloves off and we can actually talk about what we need and voice our concerns because we feel as though Bernie Sanders is someone, one of the few people who's actually listening. So, you know, that that's what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about why I was frustrated and clarify. So in the event Bernie Sanders sees this video, knows that it really it's hurtful to us to see him campaigning for Hillary Clinton. Uh, even, you know, if, if it were the case that he campaigned for both of them, I would still be admittedly hurt seeing him act as a surrogate for Hillary Clinton after everything that was done to him during the primary. I mean, his campaign was sabotaged by the DNC and collusion between the DNC and Hillary Clinton's campaign. So it's really frustrating to see him presumably having to do that against his own will or feeling obligated to do that. So in the end, that's my two cents. If Bernie Sanders does end up seeing this video, which now it seems like maybe he actually will, just know, Bernie, that my criticism of you comes from a place of love. Like, I, I, I truly believe in you. I'm inspired by you. So when I criticize you, it's because I think you can not only take that criticism, but you're willing to listen to that criticism uh, and I don't speak for every single progressive, of course, but I speak for, I think, a lot of us. And a lot of us are really, we, we feel betrayed right now by so many people. Elizabeth Warren, Rachel Maddow, who's someone who I really respected. We feel so betrayed right now. So we're on edge. So, so just realize that, you know, we're going to be hypercritical at this point. But no, in the end, it comes from a place of love. But just please don't campaign for Hillary Clinton, okay? If she really wanted progressives to support her, she would stop trying to pander to Republicans and court the endorsements of war criminals like Henry Kissinger and John Negroponte. That's all I got to say.